Welcome to my channel. In our previous uh, videos, we looked at um, linear dependence and linear independence of vectors. And then we also looked at, uh, another, in another video, we looked at uh, spanning sets of vectors. So we use the, the knowledge of uh, linear independence and the spanning uh, set of vectors to study uh, the basis of a vector space. So today we're looking at basis and dimension of vector space, and we use the, the knowledge of linear independence and the span of a vector space that we had studied in our previous videos. So the first thing I do is I define a basis of vector space, and then we try to look at several examples to ensure that the concept is clear to us. So let capital V be a vector space and uh, S be a set, be a subset of this uh, B. So S is a subset of V. So when do we say that S is a basis of V? We say that S is a basis of V if S is linearly independent and if S spans V. So if S, if S meets these two conditions, that one, it's linearly, the vectors in S are linearly independent, and that S spans V, then S will be said to be a basis of V. So let's look at an example. So the first example, we have this S. S comprising of the vectors 2, 2, and this other vector 2, negative 2. And these, are in R, these vectors are in R2. So we are asking is that the question is, is this S a basis of R2? So in other words, are these two vectors linearly independent? And two, do these two vectors span R2? Do they span R2? So if, that, if these two conditions are met, then we say that S is a basis of R2. So let's look at the first condition. So the first condition, we want to see whether these two vectors are linearly independent. And since there are two vectors, there are two ways of doing that. The first way we would want to, to determine whether uh, these vectors are scalar multiple, if one is a scalar multiple via. So if one is a scalar multiple, that is the easiest way to, to look at it. Or we can even look at it using this example that I used, where I try to obtain scalars A and B, such that A times the first vector plus B times the second vector gives me zero. And of course, that is the definition of linear dependence and independence. So if these two scalars exist and they are non-zero, then the vectors will be linearly dependent. But if they are both zero, then the vectors are linearly independent. So I just multiply them. A times the first vector plus B times the second vector, and this is what I have, a system of linear equations. I reduced echelon form, and that's what I, I obtained this, when I reduced echelon form. <laughs> so um, my first, last row here implies that B is zero. So solving going up, if B is zero, then A is also zero. So the two scalars, A and B are both zero. In other words, S is linearly independent. So it remains to show or to find out whether S spans R2. That's what I want to find out. And if it spans, since the first condition has already been met, if the second one is also met, then we say that S is a basis of R2. So let's look at the second condition. So the question is, does S span R2? And we know how to go about 
to tell if vector span a vector space. So we just as we did in our pre in our video on spanning sets, <clears throat> we choose a vector in R2 and we want to see whether The vectors that we are given are a linear combination of this vector that we've chosen. Well, a linear combination of this vector that we've chosen. So I've chosen this. It seems that I used to, so I wanted to see whether this is not zero, this should be this should be one one. This should be one one. It should be one well So I want to see whether this vector that I've chosen here is a linear can be written as a linear combination of those two vectors in S. So in other words, can I obtain scalars A and B such that A times the first vector plus B times the second vector gives me one one? So I just did that, and when I multiply like this, I get a 2A plus 2B equals to 1. And then this one will be 2a minus 2b equals to 1. I reduce this to echelon form. And when I reduce that echelon form, this is what I obtain. From here, it's clear that b is 0. So going up to the first equation, when b is 0, then a would be half. So this system has solutions. Since this system has solutions, it means that S spans R2. Remember that if it will have had no solution, then S would be not be spanning, would be a spanning set of R2. But since it has solutions, and our solutions are here, we obtain our solutions A is, exists and B exists such that this can be obtained. Therefore, S spans R2. Since S spans R2 and it also, and remember that S was linearly independent, it means that S is a basis of R2. Let's look at another example. Just before that example, this point that I have here is very important, that if you have a vector space, then every basis for that space has the same number of vectors. Every basis for that space has the same number of vectors. That means if you're looking at um, R2, then I've, a set that will be a basis of R2 must have two vectors, not more than two vectors. Suppose I'm looking at R3, then a set that will be a basis of R3 should have three vectors, and not more than three or less than three. So that's what I mean by this point, and we'll see how this point will work out to be very important to us. Let's look at this example. Determine whether or not each of the following form a basis of R3. So I want to see whether these vectors would form a basis of R3, whether this B would form a basis of R3, whether this C would form a basis of R3, whether this D would form a basis of R3. Now, very fast, we can disqualify some vectors here that they cannot form basis of R3 using the point that we just mentioned above, that a set that will form a basis of R3 should have three vectors. So that disqualifies A because A has only two vectors in R3, two vectors in R3. So this set or these vectors cannot form a basis of R3. Look at the second one. It has four vectors they cannot form a basis of R3. 
But these two, C and D, they can they can form a base of other three. So we need to find out whether they are linearly independent and whether they span R3. So that's what I've said here that A does not form a basis of R3 since a basis of R3 and this is R3 I've not written it properly here. It's supposed to be this it's supposed to be R3. Must contain exactly three elements. <clears throat> but this has two. B also does not form a basis of R3 since a basis of R3 must contain exactly three elements, but this has four. So you can see all with this, this qualifier A and B. So since C and D have three vectors, we need to find out whether they are linearly independent and whether they span R3 for them to form the basis of R3. So let's now proceed to check whether C is a basis. And we see what I've stated. I've said that these are three vectors. So to find out whether they form a basis of R3, it's enough to determine if they are linearly independent. So once they are linearly independent, of course, they'll form a basis. They'll span. If they are linearly independent, it means they span. They love to span R3, and therefore they form a basis of R3. So to find out whether they are linearly independent, we we'll seek to see whether we can find scalars x, y, z, which when modeled by the first vector, x modeled by the first vector, plus y modeled by the second vector, then plus z modeled by the these are supposed to be equal. It's not supposed to be equal. It's supposed to be Z. It's supposed to be plus Z modeled by the third vector. Plus Z modeled by the third vector. If that gives us zero, so we want to see whether this X, Y, and Z are all zero. If X, Y, and Z are all zero, then these vectors are linearly dependent. So let's just multiply very fast because we already know how to do this. This will be X plus 2y plus the result equals to 0, giving our first equation here. And then the second equation will be 2x plus 3y plus 5z equals to 0. And then the third equation will give us 3x plus 7y plus 6z equals to 0. So you have this system of linear equations, which we reduce to echelon form. And we know how to do that, how to reduce to echelon form. So I would want a zero in this position and a zero in this position. And so that to achieve that, I would take row. To get my new row two, I would take the original row two minus two row one. And then to get my new row three, I'll take the original row three minus three row one. So this row one times two subtracted from row two gives me this second row here. And uh, row three minus three row one gives me this third row here. So what follows is that I want a zero in this position. That means I would add row two to row three to get my new row three. So my first row remains where it is, second row remains where it is. So when I add the second row to the third row, I get this third row here. What does this last row mean? This last row means that Z is zero. So I solve it going up, I solve this system going up. Z is zero. So right where there's z here right zero, that will mean that y will also be zero. Move to the first equation, put zero for y and zero for z, it will mean that x will be zero. So 
That means that our scalars are all zero. Z is zero, Y is zero, and X is zero. And therefore, it means that the vectors, the three vectors there, are linearly independent. Since they are linearly independent, it's automatic that they are also, and there are three. Remember, there are three, there are three vectors. In R3, since they are nearly independent and there are three vectors in R3, they will have to span R3. They love to span R3. And therefore, S or the vector, that vector, not, is it positive? No. Those vectors, those three vectors would form a basis of R3. They would form a basis of R3. We did not need to determine whether they span because we already know that these were three vectors and they were R3. So they automatically, since they are linear independent, they automatically span. What about D? Let's try to find out whether D is a basis of R3. So just use the same reasoning. We just want to see whether the vectors in D would uh, are linearly independent. And if they are linearly independent, since they were three in R3, they would uh, span. If they are linearly independent, they would spin. And therefore, they would be a basis. They would form a basis. Now, so the vectors we are given were this, this, and this. So we want to obtain scalars x, y, and z. Say that x times this plus y times this plus z times this gives us zero. If x, y, and z are all zero, and then the vectors will be linearly independent. So let's proceed and see. Let's just multiply. Let's multiply. This will give us x plus 2y minus z equals to zero. And this will be zero. x plus 2y minus 2z equals to 0, and this will give us x minus y plus 2z equals to 0. Reducing to open form, <coughs> the end result will be this. <coughs> the last row here means that this system has solutions, that x, y, and z exist, and that they are non-zero. They exist and they are non zero. So, therefore, the given set is linearly dependent and does not form a basis of either. It's then dependent because you can see from this last, and if you don't, <clears throat> you don't know how to tell that, you can look at our video on, uh, on solving system of linear equations. And you can tell that this, if we have the last row here given as 0 equals to 0, it means that the vectors, that the scalars x, y, and z exist, and that this x, y, and z are non zero. So let's look at another example. As I say, I give several examples so that this subject becomes clear to us. I want to use polynomials this time. So the question is, <clears throat> I'm given this set of polynomials. The first polynomial here, <clears throat> the second polynomial, and the third polynomial. Polynomials of degree three, not degree two. So the question is, does S form a basis of P2? the set of all polynomials of degree at most two. So the question that if for us to answer this question, we just need to see whether this set of polynomials is linearly independent. And so to do that, we need to see whether we can find scalars x, y, and z, all of them zero, such that x times the first polynomial plus y times the second polynomial plus z times the third polynomial, these are zero. 
So let's just expand this. This will give us t square x, 2tx, 3x, 2t square y, 3ty, 7y, plus 3t square z, 5tz, and then 6z is equal to 0. I would uh, collect the like terms. So those that have t square is this, this, and this is equal to zero. So if I put them together, I equal to zero. T square will cancel out, and I have this equation: x plus two y plus three z equals to zero. Then what about those that have t? I would have two x plus 3y plus 5z equals to 0. And then what about the constants, those without a t? So again, I equate them to 0. I add and equate them to 0. So that gives me, if I was to equate the constants to 0, I would have 3x plus 7y plus 6z is equal to 0. So I have this system and I reduce it to a clone form of my result, final result here. Reducing to a clone form. Now, looking at this last row, it means that z is 0. Moving to the second equation here. When z is 0, y will also be 0. And then moving to this first equation, when y is 0 and z is 0, x will also be 0. So the scalars x, y, and z are all 0. Which means that the vectors given to us are linearly independent. And therefore, they form a basis of P2. They form a basis of P2. So I think the concept of uh, linear, uh, of forming a basis, vectors forming a basis, is now very clear. And, uh, I want to give the, the next example as an exercise to you. I have this example, and the question is, do these vectors, these are four vectors, one, two, three, four. They form a basis of R4. Of course, in R4, since there are four, since there are four, we, we need to test. If there would be more than four, we would not test because they would not form a basis. Or if they, if they were less than four. But since there are four, we need to test. <clears throat> and we need to find out whether they are linearly independent. And so just the same way, we try and do it, try and do it. I did it mine here. I wanted to find the scalars A, B, C, D. And so that A times the first one plus B times the second one plus C times the third one plus D times the fourth one is only zero. I did that and I found that the vectors, the scalars were all zero. So try it slowly on your own time and see what I get the same result as what I have here. So for me, the scalars A, B, C, D were all zero and therefore the given set was linearly independent, which means it forms a basis of alpha. Then I also look at an example now using matrices. Using matrices, so the question is, do these matrices, one, two, three, four, these are four matrices. Do they form a basis of M to two? They form a basis. So the same thing, the same thing. Want to see whether they are linearly independent. That can you obtain scalars A, B, C, D, which when you multiply by this and then add, you get a zero. Will those scalars be all zero? That's, so let me show you what I did. So I, I said 
Let me have the scale as ABCD. So A times the first matrix plus B times the second matrix plus C times the third matrix plus D times the fourth matrix equals to zero. So just multiply the first element here times A, the second, the first element here times B, the first element here times C, the first element here times D, add those first elements equate to zero. Come to the second element here, six times A, negative eight times B, negative one times C, zero times D, add those results and equate to zero. Do that for the, this element, the element in the first, uh, second row, first column, this element times three, not times A, this element times B, this A negative one times C, this negative one times D, add those results and equal to zero. Then come to the final element here in a row two, column two. So three times A, zero times B, zero times C, and then one times D and equal to zero. So I did that and this is what I got. I got this system of linear equations. And I reduced this to echelon form. Reduced the system to echelon form. And this is what I got. This is what I got. My final result when I reduced to echelon form. So I go straight to the last row here and see that it deal to zero. And then proceed this third last row here, and I found that again C would be zero. And then going to this, I would find that B would be zero. And then the finally going to the first row, A would be zero. So I found that A equals to B equals to C equals to D, and they are all zero. So since the scalars are all zero, it means those matrices are linearly independent, and therefore they form a basis of M22. They form a basis. So that is how we determine if vectors form a basis of a vector space.